Hello, everybody. Captain Marty Brill here on Friday, September the 6th. And the wind is blowing, the seas are high, the surf is rough, and our fishing report will be minimal. But we do have some things to talk about, and I'll be back in just a moment to do that. Are you ready for a fishing thrill like no other? Oh, there he is! There he is! Oh, got him up! As seen on Wicked Tune and Outer Banks, the Carolina Girl, captained by Majestic Jesse Anderson, is a custom, luxurious, 53-foot Jarrett Bay built boat running out of Hatteras Harbor Marina. Let Jesse and her crew give you a fishing experience of a lifetime. Whoa! book a trip, go online to carolinagirlsportfishing.com. Carolina Girl Sport Fishing, your offshore adventure awaits. <laughs> When it comes to finding phenomenal seafood, you gotta go insane. That's right. Stop in to the Insane Seafood Market right there on Highway 64 in Columbia. Luke Midget and his crew work hard out on the water to make sure you have the freshest selection of seafood around. They provide a wide selection of fish, crabs, shrimp, oysters, and clams, just to name a few. Insane Seafood has a hot bar to satisfy that seafood craving right on the spot. Visit them online at InsaneSeafood.com and like them on social media. Go insane at Insane Seafood Market, Highway 64 in Columbia. So, if you're not here on the Outer Banks, you may not realize it, but this is the time of year when we get we do get some weather. It's why when you book a boat, a charter boat, to go offshore fishing uh, in September, October, November, you always want to try to book a backup day. Let's say, for instance, if you're going to fish on tu- uh, on a Tuesday, and you were going to drive back to Ohio on Wednesday, keep your options open that you could fall back and actually fish uh, on Wednesday and drive back that night or the following day. Because you come a long way, a lot of people do, and put all their eggs in one basket, and then you get blown out. Now, you might not be able to get on the boat that you originally were booked with, Maybe you can, maybe you can't if it's already booked, but you will get on a similar boat and you will get to go fishing by just putting it off one day. So always have an alternative day. And uh, we talk about that because the boats have not been fishing this week, really, because of the uh, the big swell and the big surf. And we did have some phenomenal marlin fishing going on, bill fishing in general, sailfish, white marlin, and blue marlin. Anytime you have multiple boats catching two, three, and four blue marlin a day, that's really good fishing. And, of course, we've been talking about the great white marlin fishing that's just north of us. And we won't know until we get back out if this wind, this northeast wind, pushed the fish down to where we might get a shot at the white marlin. The white marlin are actually, for our areas anyway, are the most plentiful of the billfish. They average 50 to 80 pounds, 7 feet long, and all their fins are rounded. The blue marlin are the largest. They average 300 to 1,000 pounds. All their fins are pointed. And they're the least numerous of the billfish. And then you have your sailfish, which are pretty numerous too, especially lately. They they average about six feet long and average about 45 pounds apiece. So those are our three main billfish that we catch. And they're north of us, they're south of us, so that when we get back offshore fishing, it should be good. Plus, we'll see more of the blackfin tuna. We should be starting to get into the fall yellowfin bite a little bit. There's been Right before the blow, there was a few big eye tuna caught. So there's plenty to look forward to. Uh, Inshore fisheries have been catching both. We'll just wrap them all together. Hatteras, Oregon, Inland, and Ocracoke. There have been ribbon fish. There have been big drum. There have been large bluefish. And there have been Spanish mackerel. And yeah, and then if you're dropping offshore a little bit further, there's a scattered king mackerel, a scattered cobia, some bottom fishing going on for amberjacks and sea bass and things like that. So that's what's happening with our ocean boat fishing. As far as on the beach or on the piers this is the time of year when the big drums start biting and they've been catching big drum all over we'll talk about the sound fishing in a minute but uh, the pier fishing right now on the end of the piers in the evenings they are catching some big drum they're also uh during the day now it's awful rough right now the drum like that everything else does not like that And if you're on the beach trying to surf fish, you're not able to hold bottom. It's really tough. But if you got a drum rig and the right weight and you got some really fresh bait, like a mullet, a fresh jumping mullet head or piece of cut bait, man, that's a lot of fun to go down there and do some, catch some of these big drum 45, 48 inch long drum. The surf, 
before the blow, before this ocean got so stirred up, we were seeing a lot of sea mullet, a lot of pompano, a lot of bluefish. So there was variety. Variety, after all, is the spice of life. So we'll take a little break right here, and I'll be back to tell you about what's going on in the sound and in the back country. Electricity, something I don't mix well with at all. And that's why I only trust the folks at ELS OBX. ELS OBX offers a variety of services from custom electrical installations to lighting design. ELS OBX has the experience and know-how to complete any job. They're committed to providing the highest quality lighting and electrical installations or service at affordable prices. Visit them online at elsobx.com to get a brighter idea of how shockingly awesome they are. See what I did there? ELS OBX, electrical and lighting solutions you can count on. So backcountry fishing has been really good too. This is when the drum bite on the shoals at night. We've been talking about it almost every day. Big drum and, and you, you can do that if you, it's almost all boat fishing as far as backcountry. Out in the sound, on the shoals. And look, you don't want to fool around out there. It's been choppy in the sound as well, in the Pamlico Sound. So there ain't been much of anything really going on unless you got a, a lee, you can find a lee somewhere. But it, it's a applied common sense type thing. You know, per, the professional guides that do it, and there might be a lot of people that are captain's licensed and call themselves a professional guide, but do your homework, do your due diligence, and find people that do it regularly and uh, – and get on with a charter boat, that's the best way to learn the techniques and learn how those big drum are caught. Also, before the blow, it was good speckled trout uh, fishing and really good sheephead fishing. I saw, I did see yesterday, I saw an eight-pound sheephead on one of the websites, and that was off the Bonner, off the Bonner Bridge Pier. So uh, there's always somewhere that you can go fishing uh, on the outer banks or the inner banks. You just got to find the lee. You got to get the wind at your back. Uh, Hatteras Island, by its very nature, the way it curves at Buxton, there's almost always a lee shore that you can fish, whether it be on the sound or in the surf. If you say there's nowhere to go, well, keep trying because there's always somewhere to go on the outer banks. And I think that is about it for our fishing report. I still am not sure when we'll get back to normal but we'll keep an eye on it a little bit got some wet weather moving in tomorrow and uh, that doesn't bother anybody unless it's accompanied by wind we'll see what happens i hope you have a blessed day and just remember you're not going to catch them in the motel room so go out and wet a line